I want to talk first of all about uh, Munich as an environment. Do you think where you record an album has something to do with the way it sounds? Oh, very much so. Very much so. I think um, with us, I think um, always a different environment helps. I mean, we don't really like going to the same. In the early days, we used to go on the same studios all, all the time, and um, after a while, it really got you down. And we went, the last couple of years, we went out of our way to actually go to um, different uh, studios so that we just, so that it was new, it was fresh. But mind you, having said that, I contradict myself, this is the only studio we do come back now, just at the tail end, is, is Munich, because we know what it's like for, for the tail end. Whereas for, for, for to start an album, we try something different, like um, the last album was done in LA, that was the first time we ever, ever used those studios. Fuck, I forget what the name was. Um, oh, God. Uh, oh, you must know. Was it the record plan? Yes, record plan. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I forget, I forget. No, no. I'm going to need this to be kind of more... Even, yeah, really, it's not happening? Fa- well, it's happening, but it won't quite sound on mic, you know, unless you're talking directly into it. Um, yeah, I came to see you guys at the record plant when uh, uh, you were there. I don't remember what month that was. And oh. uh, there was me, Brian, and the engineer waiting for all the rest of you. <laughs> yeah, I don't know where you guys were, but you never showed I, I didn't. I didn't see you there, did I? No. Uh, but uh, Munich, as opposed to your own studio in Mantra? Uh, I hate my studio, to be honest. <laughs> They'll kill me for saying that. Um, no, I, I mean, I, we've used that as well, you see, and um, I... Oh, God, they'll, they'll kill me for saying this. I, I, I like Mantra, but I mean, only for like a couple of days. <laughs> That's not enough to make an album. It's nice, it's very scenic. I mean, you've got a wonderful view. It's a beautiful lake, and... Um, it's nice. I mean, I just um, I don't mind doing I don't mind doing a few maybe the odd track there, but I'm not. I'd hate to sort of think beforehand that I'd be saddled with the whole album over there, or even a major part of it. I, I just couldn't go through with it in in you know in in our own studios. Um, Munich I like because I like the city. I like you know, it's very clean. It's 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 very safe. When you live in New York and then you come to Munich, you just think you you can. You can have your car and you can park it anywhere without thinking, oh, God, it's going to be gone by the time you come back. And um, it's just different, ex- ex- apart from the fact that everybody speaks German. <laughs> it's okay. I'm learning a little bit of German, too. But you also did, uh, was it the mixing of this album in, in L.A.? No, the mixing was done here. Oh, the mixing That's what I said earlier on. It's, it's nice to come back to, for the tail end, you, it's nice to come back to a studio that you do know and recognize so that you know what the sounds are going to be like. Is this the first digitally mastered album you've done? Yeah, yeah, that's right. I, what's, yeah. what's that mean? Oh, don't ask me. I, I don't know. Te- I don't know techno. You, you have to ask a, a Mac. It's just you just get a cleaner sound, and you just bypass certain um, generations of tape that way. You know, it's just a, a new way of doing it. It's all very clean, and you virtually get you virtually get the kind of sound that you do create in the studio outside. Because most of the times, when you when uh, you, you do it in the studio, and by the time it gets on record. It's it's you know you lose a generation and sort of um, it's just it's basically just trying to get the cleanest sound possible that you can get and and digital masterings are almost there you know they're the cleanest at the moment apart from that that has about, about as much technology I know ask me about something more fruity go on okay the uh, the last album was kind of a we talked about it when when it came out kind of a departure for Queen and it seems on this you know more on the funky side it was. Yeah, everybody seemed to hate it. Um, it was just something different. It was very different. We were out on a limb, and we wanted to do something, and I still think that that is a good album. I mean, I know it didn't... Of course, the the only way people gauge albums these days is if it was successful or not. If it's a suce- successful album, then it's a good album. It's, I mean, you know, that's the way you, I guess you have to gauge it. But I, but for a musician, I mean, of course, I mean, <coughs> we wouldn't have put it out if we thought it was a, if, if a second-rate album and to start with. I mean... But we were, we were out on a limb. We wanted to do the things that a rock and roll act hadn't done before. I mean, go straight into the black area and do funky stuff. And uh, and it's okay if you sort of do things like that in the beginning. But after a while, if 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 a group is, um, you know, if people sort of get to know you in a, in a particular way, and then you change so so quickly, sometimes you know it, it's it's hard to grasp. And then the timing and. You know, it's got to be. It's got to come out at the right time. I still think that if that album, say, came out about, say, now, people would be more aware of it, wouldn't you say? Mm-hmm. Just at, at that time, you know, now the Michael Jacksons have suddenly happened, and and um, you know, it's, it's it's being the right 
place at the right time. Speaking of Michael Jackson, you guys are mm. good pals. Yeah, yeah, we still, um, well, we worked, we worked on three tracks. I mean, that's about a year ago, and we still haven't finished them. My sort of um, projects never seem to get finished, I don't know why. <laughs> maybe it's me, maybe it's me. No, it's, um, he's very busy. You know, we, we talk to each other now and again. And, um, first I was going to be on a Thriller album, then I was supposed to uh, do something for the, um, the Jacksons album. And um, he's in L.A., I'm in Munich. And, um, well, something might happen on my solo album. See, I've got something up my sleeve. Aha. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. If there's time, you know, I might go to L.A. Or, and finish these tracks. You know, I'd, li I'd like to finish these tracks. The, the funny thing about it, we wrote a, a song together called Victory. We haven't finished it at all, and um, I hear that uh, Jackson's new album is called Victory, but I, d I don't think the song's on it, and, uh -huh. uh, so he's just used the title. He's I'll kill him if he used the song <laughs> without me. You hear that, Michael? <laughs> he's taking a, a ton of crap right now from uh, Jehovah's Witnesses. I guess he's quite a religious guy, right? Well, they're saying that he's much too suggestive. And no, he is a Jehovah's Witness. Right, so, but, I mean, but they're, I mean, say uh, they're saying that he's not behaving like one, yeah. and he seems like rather a clean-living kind of person to me. I don't know. To be honest, I don't know. How does, how does one live like a Jehovah's Witness? I mean, well, I suppose I, I, you've got to do... The only thing I know about that is there's, you're not allowed to have any blood transfusions and, and things like that, which I think is d uh, deadly against, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I didn't know that he was... I thought he was quite... Um, quite keen on that thing. I know he loves animals and uh, things like that. He's okay. He's all right. I think it's the dancing that's got them down. Is that I, it? I think they He's got to do something for a living. My God! <laughs> He's a musician and... Um, I don't know. I think I think he does everything quite quite okay. I think... I mean, I couldn't go, I'd do what he does because, I mean, he's just a totally different life. I mean, he says, doesn't eat meat and... Um, but each to his own, you know. I mean, I think uh, in the end it's, it's the music that counts and he comes out with very good music. This He's a good lad. He's a real good lad. This being your thirteenth, is that your thirteenth album? Yes, that's right. Yeah. God, that's amazing. Number thirteen. Lucky thirteen. <coughs> is it hard Makes to it stay? so old. Is it hard to stay <coughs> motivated? It is hard. Yes, it, it does get a. There's different ways of looking at it. I mean, sometimes you just think, okay, you've done enough, and uh, you want to do. You do want to do different things. I mean, I'm still hungry to do things, but it's not. It's, it's not the same kind of hunger. It's. It's a bit sort of you know. Okay, you've done a so. And so you think, okay, I'm going to try this, and if it doesn't work, I'm going to try something else. It's not that it's got to be this, and this has got to happen. You know, this has got to work this time. There's no sort of, it's, it hasn't got that knife edge. But um, it, it's, there are different ways of looking at it. I mean, you, you're more mature, you're more experienced, and so you have to sort of look at it a bit more, a, a bit, with a more cool out outlet, you know. It's just got to be a bit more cool and... Um, I don't know. I don't mean blasé by that. I just mean that you just you'd be a bit more experienced about it. You, know, you don't have to rush things. Plus, I would think that change is very important to a band that's been around as long as Queen because how can you stay interested? Personally? You're dead right. We hate each other. <laughs> <laughs> we hate each other's guts. No, it's just, um, you know, we've, we've sort of um, been together 13 or 14 years and um, and... And after that time, I mean, you, if you're still together, you, are, you, you like each other instinctively and you don't have to sort of think about um, spending social time together and things, which we, we hardly ever do together. So, I mean, basically, we only come together when there is music. Or, so, basically, it's a job. I, I think we all look upon it as... And we, I think we're professional enough to think about it that way. And, um, and I think that's good. So, we keep away from each other's um, territories, to be honest. Otherwise, we'll, I think I'd just tear all my hair out and... and, and you know, jump out of a tall building, to be honest, if I had to sort of, you know, live the, the way we did in the early days. But that, you, a group has to go through all that, you know, to start with, because um, you have to know, you have to get to know each other and their musical abilities and this and that. I think we've, we've done a lot together. And um, I don't know, I think now, now, all, now all we're doing is just staying together to make music, which is what we were initially there to do. Does the idea of how can we top this ever enter into? It happened at a very early stage, after Bohemian Rhapsody. It was like, people were saying, how are they going to top this? I mean, if you, if you go sleep, uh, uh, sleep at night thinking about how you're going to top what you did, I mean, you just, that, that is going to be your downfall. You know, you've just got to say, okay, it's done. That's the way I, I, I look at it. I mean, music is just, it's, it's, it's a big consumer thing. You just, you just consume, as far as um, 
our music is, I think I said that last time, as far as our music is concerned, people should just listen to it and dis discard it and wait, and, and wait for, for, and that's what people do, wait for the next one. I don't like harping on, uh, of course they keep coming back, you know, Bohemian Rhapsody always comes back, We're the Champions, all that was, well, and people have to take note of that, but I mean, as far as I'm concerned, all those, those days are over, that era is over, that type of music is, is, is now over, and I, I, I don't wish to even think about it or write about it. Disposable, I think, is the word Disposable, you used. yeah, 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 that's right, yeah, like a tampon. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, it's, 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 I like it that way, that, that keeps it fresh, you know, and I'm, I mean, even like, say, the works, okay, it's, um, the album is, is, is very current at the moment, but as far as I'm concerned, the music part of it is over, okay, it's still selling or whatever, but I'm thinking in terms of what I'm going to do next already, you know, it's just like, it's, 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 it is like a sausage factory after a while, you know, it's like music, it's become that way. I mean, to me, it's just a, <laughs> it's, a pa it's a packet of sausages, you know, and just marketed and then I, I just want people to eat it and that's it. But you are then like a sausage company improving the product, you're changing the product yes, as the times I, change. That's what, that's what most bands are. I mean, they can't harp on, on one album, you know, otherwise that would be it. You can't make one good album and say, okay, this is it, you know, you know, um, you know, you know how, how, how much can you get out of one album, you know, okay, you can have it on, in your collection and sort of listen to it, but people want, you know, new stuff every day. And uh, music is like that. And um, people do have to be very aware and change with the times and see what's going on. And um, I like to think that Queen's music does change with the times, and I know it does. I know it does, and I mean, it'd be, be awful to keep coming up with the same formula all the time. It, number one, it would be boring for us, and I think it would be very boring for, for the public, and the press would have a field day. The press have a field day with us anyway. And I don't think you would have stuck around for as long. No, as I you don't have. Think so. I don't think so. I must tell you, when I, w I was in London the other day, and a mm. uh, taxi driver, uh, I, I told him what I, that I was going to come see you in Munich, and you're his favorite band. But he said he was so pissed off because he'd seen Duran Duran on some TV show, and they mm. said, well, we're bigger than the Beatles. And he's going, God, who are these guys? You know, yeah, they got well, th they've got three albums. Where do they think they're coming from? Well, I don't know. Sometimes people get... I guess they're, they're aiming high and things like that, and then they sort of... No, I mean, nobody's bigger than the Beatles. I mean, it's just something that's happened, and you just—I uh, suppose—I mean, the Beatles will always be a sort of um, a, a, a sort of um, way to sort of, uh, way to gauge yourself, because I mean, they're always a gauging point, you know, trying to be bigger than them. But I mean, it's just—you know—you have to sort of to be bigger than them, or even to sort of come anywhere near. Uh, something like the Beatles, you just have to sort of—it has to start from the very uh, beginning. You've just got to sort of. I mean, like Michael Jackson now is, is, is in, in a way, one of the biggest things going because he's sold more records than anybody else and, and he's won all those awards and, and this and that. So that's, he's suddenly set a whole new precedent, you know, and um, that's what makes somebody huge and, 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 and big. And that's the way it, it either happens very quickly earlier on or, or forget it. I know Michael's been in the business a long time, but I mean, to a lot of people, he's a, a, a new artist because he suddenly changed, and and he's still only about twenty four, twenty five. God, is he that young? Mm. That's amazing. Makes you sick. Makes me sick too. <laughs> would you like to win a Grammy? Does that the idea of that turn you on? Oh, time? it would be nice, but I mean, I'm not, not going to lose sleep over it. I'm not going to lose sleep over it. No, I'm quite happy the way I am at the moment. Yeah. Well, you've always seemed to have a good time, no matter what. You, you have do. to, otherwise, you know. I mean, I'm, I just. Um, I don't, I don't, I used to worry a lot, and I just don't worry about it anymore. I mean, you just, it just, it ages you, for a start. Um, <clears throat> no, it's not, you just don't, you don't need to worry, actually. I mean, you just, I'm not saying I don't have any problems, of course, everybody has problems, but I mean, I don't seem to worry about them so much as, as I used to before. You know, I used to be far more nervous than I, than I am, you know, it's just so highly strung. Anyway, that, I'm always going to be that. And, um... No, I'm not worried about it. I mean, I just, I just want to keep moving on. What's made you be less nervous now? Old age, I guess. <laughs> Prefer to think of it as maturity, Freddie. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I said that. Age. I said I said that. I said that earlier on. No, I just, um, I'm more set in my ways now, and I'm just, a, I seem to be able to control things a bit better. And and that, that doesn't mean just musically. It's the whole organisation around me. You know, things and people in business, the people who work for me, everything, and. Um, I just, I mean, I, 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 maybe I just sort of said to myself that um, I know that there, there's always going to be problems. People always have problems. And I think um, 
what happens is you, you try and overcome them. You try and sort of, you know, sort of cross the, you know, overcome the obstacle. And then when you, you, do, you do that, and then there's always two in its place. So, I mean, I, I've just said to myself that there's always going to be, as far as in my profession and the way I live, there's always going to be problems, no matter what you do. So I'm just thinking, okay, I'll just take, take them as they come. So I've become more sort of complacent in, in, as far as that's concerned, rather than worry about it. Otherwise, I'll just get, you know, just worry myself to death. If there's one underlying theme on this album, it seems to be kind of um, lamenting, sterile, m machine kind of things and the way radio is getting, you know, it, that that pops up a couple of times on the album. It's not... I'm, trying to, I'm trying to think. I mean, I, uh, the, way, the way this album is, is just, I don't think there's a concept in it at all. To be honest, it's just a bunch of songs that four people have written and they happen to be on an album. And people have to try and make a concept out of it. And um, if there's a, a thread running through it or if there's some sort of meaning, no, it's just a bunch of songs. And sometimes two or three songs seem to fall in one category. So people come out and say, okay, maybe they're doing... I know machines and the clinical part of it is, is one aspect. But that's, I think, from Brian's uh, point of view, because he's still uh, guitar-oriented and, um, and he, he write that way. As far as I... I write just, each song is different, you know, I just, um, I had a bunch of songs and I just chose about three or four of them, and um, they happen to be on the album. There's love ballads and there's, um, there's the happy songs and there's, I don't know, I, I, to be honest, I don't think there is any kind of concept that, that runs through it, it's just, all I know is it's just, just about every kind of song that you, you can get uh, from from Queen, and um, so we just, just threw them on on the disc, and um, that's why we call it the works, because it, it, it is the works. I mean, we just tried every, you know, every possible um, attack on every uh, on on every song that 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 there was, and um, I think the works the works is, is is a good title for it. Apart from that, I don't think there's any hidden meanings for anything. Because it does seem to have um, things that are reminiscent of almost every phase mm. of Queen. And you've gone through a lot of different phases because I was listening to the yeah. first couple albums. I think after after Hot Space, where we actually tried to channel ourselves in, in, in one direction, especially on the first side, we thought this time we would just leave it to our individual creativity. And what came out was a, a bunch of very different songs. And rather than try and group them and try and get a force of style out of them, like you were saying earlier, and make a concept of it, which Hot Space was, more black orientated and things. We just said, no, we'll just let the songs do the things. That's the strength. And then we just had to group the songs together, basically. And uh, we just thought, yeah, that's the works. We just thought, it doesn't matter if a song is so totally out of concept, or we're just going to put it on anyway, because it's a Queen song. How do you come up with the songs? Is everybody writing all, all the time? Yeah, it's, it's very... Um, it's quite uh, it's quite competitive now, even just within the, within the, the band. Fucking hell, I mean, it's like... Uh, it's it's quite it's, it's before it even gets out uh, 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 to the public, and then it's it's, it's competitive with all uh, with, with all the other bands that are around. I mean, it, it starts off being competitive within the group, because I mean, uh, you know, there are four uh, four good writers, and they're equally sort of adept at, at doing things, and um, they're no passengers. So I mean, and especially now Roger's writing very well, and so is John, and um, so because Brian and I used to be the, the principal writers. Now I think uh, we all write the same, and um, so there's a good um, there's a good fight right at the start, and uh, we just basically come out with our own ideas and uh, present it to each other, and just say, okay, you know, what do you think? And um, then then the fighting starts. I mean, if we don't like it, we just uh, or you know, I I seem to have more. I, I seem to participate more on say John's or Roger's tracks. I mean, they, they let me help help them and and, and um, suggest more things. Brian's got his own sort of writing um, ideas, and they're very sort of strong to start with anyway. So I mean, he's just. Um, I don't seem to be able to get into his ideas so much. But in a way, that's quite good. I'd rather leave it to him. And um, it doesn't mean I just stay out of it altogether. I let him sort of do a lot of it. Whereas, whereas in John's songs or Roger's songs, I mean, I sort of get in there at a quite an early stage. And they sort of, you know, they, they, they don't mind me sort of um, tearing it apart and sort of piecing it back together again. Lyrically like speaking, you mean? Every, every way. You yeah. did sometimes I take Sometimes I take the whole song over. Like, um, well, I don't mind saying it. It's just like Radio Gaga. I just instantly felt that there was something there was going to be something you know you it could build that could you could build that into a really good um, a, a strong saleable um uh, commodity and i think roger was just thinking thinking of it as just another track i don't know and i just said no i think it needs so i virtually took it over 
and um, I sent him on a, on a he went on a holiday, <laughs> a skiing holiday for about a week, and came back and um, I was, but it's basically his song, you know. He had the ideas there together, and I just I just felt that there was you know some construction elements in there that were wrong to start with, and he just said, okay, you do what you want. And That's the first biggie for Roger, isn't it? First, yeah, first yeah, hit. Yeah, yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah, he wa he wanted that. Uh, very badly, and I think uh, he he deserves it. Yeah, it's a big hit in in the Europe, in Did Europe and <clears throat> places. It, it would be true to say, wouldn't it, that uh, audiences, both at concerts and radio audiences in different countries, like different things, don't they? Of course, it would be so boring if everybody liked the same song. Well, you know, in the United States, though, it's <laughs> it's so big. But a top forty single that's number one in New York is almost sure to be a top forty single in in L. A. too. Because that's the Americans, the Americans. I mean, I mean you, you're talking about the whole world. I mean, the Japanese culture and the way the Germans consume product. It's, it's, all, it's all very different, yeah. This, sometimes it does amaze me where if you write a song which is, which is a good song and it sells in, say, three quarters of the, the market, you just, you, you're so, um, I get so, I'm dumbfounded to find out why uh, sometimes it doesn't sell at all in, 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 in say, something like America. I mean, Mall of Kintai, which is a, a, a Paul McCartney song, was was one of the biggest hits in England. I mean, it is the biggest uh, single ever uh, uh, written. I mean, it's the biggest selling single in England, Mal of Kintai, it sold over two million or something like that. And it was never even released in America in, in, in that way because he just felt, or the company or whatever felt immediately that it wasn't going to be. So they, they, they turned the, the single around, sure, right. And they got the B side of that and the A side in, 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 uh, in America. I'm sure McCartney was pissed off. <laughs> I'm sure he was too. Phoebe! <laughs> More wine. <laughs> you co-wrote a song with Brian on this album. I know. <coughs> there should be an eclipse. <coughs> that was a very. I liked. I, I liked the way we, we actually approached that song because it was a. <coughs> we were looking at all the songs we had, and we we just we we thought that we were the one thing that we didn't have. The one thing that we didn't have was was one of those real limpid ballads, <laughs> or the lilting type, you know, the, the love of my life type things. And um, rather than sort of um, um, one of us saying, "Okay, I'm going to go back and do, it, uh, go back and think about it and write it," Brian, and I just said, "Brian, why don't we just think of something right right here?" And that that song just evolved in about two days. He just got on an acoustic, and I just sat next to him, and we just worked it out together. And um, and I like it. That's why it's sparse. And, and and the other thing is also we only had like a couple of days to to go to the tail end of 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 the uh, the, the project, and we had to get the album released. It was a deadline, and uh, that kind of pressure c uh, sort of helped. And uh, I came up with the, the, the ly lyrical side, and then he came up with the chords, and uh, something just happened. And it's the first first time we yeah, we never ever see if we actually thought. Beforehand, and said, "Okay, you know, Brian, you know, Brian, and I should sit down and write a song together." I don't think it would have ever happened because, I mean, then all all kinds of uh, the egos would have played havoc to start with, and uh, who does what, and, and and this way we didn't have time to think about it. We just sort of went in there, got it together. And if it didn't work, we were going to throw it out, and it seemed to work, and it was sort of quite strong. And uh, we said, oh, yeah, "This should this should work uh, very well as a as a tail tail end of the album." I would have guessed that uh, Brian wrote the lyrics. And that you well, did honey, well. I did. <laughs> you it altruistic sounds... little thing, you. <laughs> <laughs> it's, that, that's the way it is. It's sort of. Oh, did they sound like like Brian's things? I'm. This is more in depth, and I know it sounds like that, but um, I can come up with those too. It's. Uh, it's just something that. Uh... No, I mean, I, I wouldn't like to say that I wrote it all. Brian had, you know, he was there, but I I, I remember that I. Um, most of the lyrics on that al on that song are, are, are mine, yes. No. But I mean, Brian did help with the, uh, the the line here and there. I mean, if he wrote them, I would say yes. Are, are lyrics important to you, or are they they're they're disposable very, they're, they're, also? They're, 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 no, they're very important to me in the fact that they're very they're very hard. I find them very difficult, and I I, I sometimes feel that I always feel my melodies are much stronger, and then I find that the, the, my lyrics seem to sort of. Um, bring the song down, so I have to really work hard at my lyrics to sort of bring, up, bring the standard up. And uh, I, I, I wish I was Elton John and had Bernie told me to write all my lyrics sometimes, but no, I, I, I like to write them myself. 
I find them very difficult. They're the most difficult thing for me. Speaking of Elton, another good friend of yours. Were you as shocked as the rest of the world, his marriage? Same here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> On Valentine's Day. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I just uh, funny thing is I haven't I haven't um I haven't talked to him since since he got married, so I mean I I wonder what's up his sleeve. <laughs> well, Connie Pappas Hillman says that mm -hmm. he wants very much to have children. A baby, yeah, I know, I know. That's what I remember him saying something something like that. And I said I don't know, I said something like that. If you want babies you just go to Harrods and buy one. <laughs> and <I did. laughs> That's right, from the cradle to the grave, is that their, their slogan? What? For, that you can get anything in Herod's from the cradle Virtually, to the grave. Yeah, you can get an elephant there. Whatever. Exactly, that's what I meant. So just, if you buy two, you can have a nanny thrown in. <laughs> or something. No, but um, I haven't... He seems to be very happy. Maybe he does. Maybe he does want uh, children and that's it. Do you write your songs on guitar or piano? Um, well, these days, basically, I just write them in my head, to be honest. Yeah, I don't... Otherwise, basically, piano, yeah. The guitar part is over. I mean, I, st I, I thought the odd time I can... Uh, crazy little thing was about the last song that I uh, ever wrote on, on a guitar. I'm, I'm so limited with the guitar chords. Sometimes that's a good thing. That's why I liked Crazy Little Thing uh, the same way. If I knew too many guitar chords, then I'd sort of ruin them. But otherwise, it's piano. But most of the time, I sort of conjure up things in my head now. And, and, and um, then I go to either synth synthesizer or whatever and just, just play it out and... Uh, or go to a drum box, you know, just just get a drum machine and, and, and get that. It's, it's a different way of writing now, you know. My whole way of writing is very different. And um, before I used to sit <clears throat> on, maybe I should do that, before I used to sit on the piano and, 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 and sort of really work <coughs> work my ass off to just get the, get the whole chords and the whole construction before I actually got some sort of um, theme into a song. Now, and now I, I just, it's, it's a different way of thinking. I just don't like sort of doing that. I just want all the ideas to come in my head and then they come out. It's a different way of writing because I just feel that um, if, if they're not in my head then they're not worth putting down. So rather than... But then afterwards I have to work, you know, I mean, it's, and then I have to piece it apart. But I, I, like things to, I like things to happen far much more quickly than, uh, these days than before. Before I was quite uh, willing to sort of come back to it another day and said, okay, I remember these few quotes from last night, let's do it again. No, I'd, I'd rather that the whole piece came together in, 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 the, in, in the first session, otherwise, forget it, I'd try something else. Yes, there's so many different things you can try these days. Synthesizer seems to be playing a bigger and bigger part in your... Very much so, you can get so many... That's why, I mean, I'm t I, mean I, don't, I don't know half the things that most people know about synthesizers, but um, I'm trying to learn, because especially for the solo album, I, I want to do everything myself, so I mean, I want to make sure that the things that, say, say Brian did, like... A guitar orchestra. I can actually, if I wanted that, I can recreate on, on synthesizers and things like that. And basically, I think I'm going to actually get a chance to do things on my solo album, which I, I virtually wouldn't want to do with uh, with Queen, because, I mean, say something like a drum pattern. I mean, Roger would always do that for, for me on, on a Queen album. But on my solo album, I actually want to do it myself, so I can actually, want, I want to program the drum machine myself or and things like that, so that I, I feel I'm doing things that are... Um, it is a new... Um, new area for me, and I'm actually going to try and do things that I never did with Queen before. So that would be first. This Fairlight machine is pretty fascinating, mm, mm. isn't it? It's beyond me, to be honest, but um, there are people that can work it, and um, I think in the end it just goes a bit, it's a bit too far. I mean, gadgets are one thing. In the end, you've got to come up with a song. They can't write the song for you. I mean, they help a lot. I mean, they come up with wonderful sounds and wonderful sort of uh, things which can stimulate you and say, oh, that's a good, good sound, let's use it. But they don't write a song. You can program it to death. I mean, it can't. It, it can't write a song. And basically, some, and sometimes you can get stuck in all these um, technicalities and, and ruin a song. I write to sort of. I like the idea that they're around, but I mean, you've got to be careful how you use them. Yeah. I basically like to think that I, I write. If I can write a good song, that's enough. And the gadgets come later. The solo album is a big challenge for you, isn't it? Yeah, I waited this long, and I think I better do it now before. Um, I lose it all. It's just uh, no. This is it, it's a high point this year. <laughs> <laughs> Once that's done, it's it's over, and I'll go back to doing Queen stuff. But I've I've, I've deliberately taken a, a bit of time off to do to do this because I mean, if I do this project, I'm going to do it properly. I don't want to sort of you know before a, f a few years ago, I, I wanted to do it then, but I didn't have the time, and I could have sort of rushed it. I, I really don't want to rush it. I just want to do it in the way that I feel. And now the time is right. And while I sit here in Munich, it's just the beginning of, 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 of my solo.
project. Have you been writing songs for it for years, or? No, 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 no. I have. I've thought about it. I mean, you just don't. You know, I just write songs, and at, at that time, all, all my songs were for Queen. And um, well, there are lots of songs that haven't sort of been on Queen albums, and I can sort of go through, you know, delve into the barrel and see what's there. But I mean, the funny thing is, in the moment I write, I write songs, and then if they're not used, I they're, they're virtually uh, discarded, if you know what I mean, because I just feel that if they weren't used, then they're not good enough. But sometimes some of the best songs are left behind, and if you sort of, um, you know, it, it, it's just knowing if they're good for the time. Or whatever. At the moment, I just want to write everything that's totally new and, and sparkling. And um, I remember, I mean, uh, Roger was saying that I, I have a batch of songs that weren't used. I mean, I could put them on an album, make a solo album out of those. But I want, it would be awful. I want, uh, it would all be rejected material, as it were. And uh, I, want, I want to come up with very fresh material that, that's actually me at the moment. Are you going to produce yourself or will Mac do it? Well, Mac will do it with me, yeah. You, you wouldn't, even on Queen albums, it's pretty much a collaboration, isn't it? Between yeah. the, the band and, mm -hmm. and Mac. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I guess by now you pretty much know each other's ways, though. Yeah, Mac is, especially for me, is a very integral part. I mean, he just seems to know exactly what I want without telling him. And that, that is good. That's sort of, you, you know, you can gain a lot of time by that. Rather than, um, so the moment sometimes when I, I just go into a studio and he knows I work, I work very fast, and and I get I get very um, I get disillusioned and I get uh, I get bored very quickly if it's not happening. So he knows the moment I go in there when things are happening, the tapes are running and he's already got all the <coughs> all his EQ together, all all the sounds together, <coughs> and he knows that um, if I come back and I say, oh my God, you haven't got a sound together, I'll get bored. So he he knows he knows me. So it's a very I like this partnership with him. I do. I think more so than the others. He helps me a lot because I mean I'm. Technically, I'm just not, I'm not just very good, so I mean, he really helps me in that way. I just like to go in there and do the musical part of it, totally just the creative part, and, and he does all the rest. So what's the first step, then, in the making of an album, after, after the songs are written? Well, you've got to record them properly, <laughs> with a good sound, so that's right. going to happen. <laughs> a backing track-wise, though. Yeah, and well, you just got to get a, a good backing track, you know, you get a good backing track, and then you just got to piece the song together. And then... Um, when you do the overdubs, you've got to make sure you do the right overdubs. You can do too many overdubs sometimes, and uh, it's it's basically. I hate before we used to do. We used to have the sifting process where we used to have a song and we used to just put everything on to, on it and and then find out what worked. I hate doing it, and that's that's like putting the kitchen sink on it and then then taking, then actually sort of peeling things off which didn't work. That's the the long way of going about it. You know, I'd, I, now I like to feel that I know what's going to work. Which is, I mean, it, it comes through experience, and I know, and, and I just say, okay, this is, and you have to make decisions. So I just feel, okay, this is going to be right, and and, and we do it, and then we just shift it around a little, and you, and then you say, okay, yes, this is it. There's so many various ways of writing a song. I mean, you can just go on forever, and say, okay, I'm going to try this, I'm going to try this, I'm going to try this, but then sometimes you can really ruin a song because you've tried so many different things. You don't know what to sort of what's it going to end up with. You know, you have to, decisions are, are, are is is a very is a focal point. You know, you just have to you have to. I mean, there there's so many you can decide at, at, at various intervals. You can either decide very early on that the song's going to turn out this way, or you can change your mind the next day and and say, okay, I'm going to change. A whole song can change overnight. And uh, so you've just got to be very strong and make a decision and say, this is how it's going to stand, and stop here, and that's it. When you're on the road, songs do change overnight, though, don't they? I mean, I oh, would yes. think you must be awfully tired of playing Bohemian Rhapsody by now. Well, I am a bit, <laughs> actually, but, you know, it's, it's, I mean, when you're talking about stage and presentation, that, that's a whole different kettle of fish, because... Um, Yes, we. In, in a funny way, I like I like the fact that the, the songs do change because it would be awful to. Re I hate this thing about trying to recreate your albums on stage. I, you know, a lot of people come up to me sometimes and say, "Oh, yeah, they sound just like the album," but they don't. I know they don't. We we sometimes deliberately change our songs to 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 so that they have a different. I think our songs do change drastically. You can you can make so much out. Look at "Love of My Life" for uh, uh, for instance. I mean, you know, on on, on record that is. It's got all kinds of different things. I play piano on that. On stage, it's just it's just Brian playing the guitar and me singing it. It's just got a whole total new look on that because it works on stage much better that way. 
Do you consider so, how a, a sound is going to come across on stage? Oh, before we write it, no, yeah. not at all. No, we just write. We write for, we write for the studio. We we write a song, to, and and we put things on it so that it sounds the best for the for the record. We don't think about how it's going to sound on stage because I mean that would be, I think that would be limiting the actual song. I mean you you've just got to put, you've got, just got to give the song what it needs, the full. The full quota just just for the for the studio because I mean that's what people are going to hear it that way and then when if if, if we think it's going to it needs changing for uh, uh, stage um, adaptation then you just do that you just change it for stage I don't think uh, because I don't think stage uh, the actual sort of stage presentation should come into it at, at, at you know the recording stage because I mean, that can ruin a song how do you guys uh, decide on Virtually anything. There are four of you. Does does majority rule, or does everybody have to agree? Well, no, sometimes, yeah. In the end, yeah, so majority does rule. Yeah, we do. In the end, what what can you do? You know. But I mean, uh, there'll be other. Well, sometimes you have two and two. What do you do then? I think you just keep it going until somebody falters and, go, and goes the other way. And basically, it is like that. I think whoever speaks loudest in the end, or whoever's, whose throat, you know, wh whoever keep going uh, wins. Cause sometimes. Uh, I know sometimes John just says, "Oh God, I can't, I can't take it. Just make your decision. I don't care. I'll just go along with the rest." Sometimes that happens, you know. And, uh... Who's around most during the recording process? <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> I've noticed. <laughs> I'll tell you who's around most is Mac. For Mac, because he's. He's the co-producer, and he has to be there for all the songs. I mean, sometimes, and I, I do find that that, that can be. It must be very taxing for him, because there are times where I just I've had enough. I can just go away for a couple of days, knowing fully well that the others are going to be doing their stuff. Mac has to be there all the time to make sure it's still on tape. So I guess he's he's there most of the time. In fact, he is. I know he's there most of the time. Otherwise, it just doesn't get done. But you do, you know, as as creative people and all that, you do need a breather. You know, you sometimes have to get away and get out of this whole thing and, and look at it in perspective. It's like having a paint, you know, doing a painting. I mean, if you're so involved, you just have to give it a rest sometimes. And uh, with me, I know that I, I find that if I, if I keep dwelling on, 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 on one project for too long, I ruin it. I know I ruin it. So I just, I just keep going. I, I know that I have to finish it as, as quickly as possible. Otherwise, I discard it and start with something else. So it's sort of like your first instinct is right. That's that's the way I go I go about it. I like it like it's like a newly laid, fresh egg, you know. I just um, because there's so many ways of writing a song. I mean, you can just come up and just. I write very quickly as well. I mean, that's part of it. I mean, and so I sort of utilize that. I I sort of I work on that, and um, you know, these days I just I just go into a, a studio and just just get there, and I have a few ideas in my head, and uh, and, the, and the last. A couple of weeks. What I've been doing is I've just been going to the studio, totally with a, with a blank, with with no ideas at all. And Max sort of uh, sets me all these tasks. He just says, "Okay, try and write something with this this tempo." So he works out the thing on just a total drum machine. And I have to sort of say, "Okay, it's like it's like um, a project every day." And I and like I have to finish it by the end of the evening. You know, uh, I I don't mean the, the total finished product, but a, an overall idea of what a song should should be like. And I've been doing that, and it's, it's worked out quite well. It's you, you listen to some of them. A, go a goal, right? You set yourself it's just a goal. Gone, yes, yes, day. yes. I think that's that's good. Rather than say, okay, knowing fully well that you have like three months or something, you can come back to it. No, I just said, no, I either I've got to finish the the, the thing today, otherwise it's not worth it. And uh, it's a challenge. It's a very big challenge, but I like doing it that way on spec. So I go in there totally, not knowing. What's going to happen? And suddenly, you know, I, I let Mike do uh, give me give me the sort of the challenge. He says, "Okay, today write one with with, a, with, with this tempo or something like that." Or write. Or he just he just tells me. He says, "Write something in this mode." So I don't have to think about it beforehand, and I just let my creative juices run run havoc. <laughs> it's just a tad of discipline on the side. <laughs> well, <I've, coughs> well, I've got to discipline myself. You know. <coughs> But it's, it's, it's wonderful because sometimes the greatest things happen because you, you're not limiting yourself. You're not thinking, oh, a certain song has got to be written in this way. Because before, sometimes you say, okay, I'm going to sit down and, and try and think of, well, what kind of song do I want to write? I want to write one with a heavy content. And the moment you start thinking that way, you're already limiting yourself because you're thinking, okay, it's got to be heavy. I just go in there and just 
sometimes you know, if you're writing something, uh, two or three songs can happen because I mean you're going, you're not limiting yourself. You're going from one side to another, and you think, my God, this is this is crazy. But out of all that, you get you got say a minute or even thirty seconds of something that is worthwhile. You lift that out and suddenly say, okay, I'm going to keep going with that, and, and out comes a song. How how far along are you on the solo project? How much is done? Um, well, very little as far as I'm concerned. Basically, I've just got ideas, and um, I think I've got some very good songs. But now I've got to sort of, I still, I still want to go into the studio and, and do what what I said before. Just go in there and start creating, and, and then I want like a, um, at least fifteen songs that are running around, and then I'm just going to pick ones that I want, really want to work on. You know, I would have guessed just from having watched you perform so much that you love performing more than. Recording, but now I'm getting the drift that he, you really dig it in the studio too. It's it's um, it goes in phases. It goes in phases. I'm I like I like doing studio work as long as it doesn't take too long. And most Queen albums take a hell of a long time, and and I get really bored. Now that my solo project's coming up, I know I'm the I'm the one to blame if it takes long or whatever. But I mean I'm I'm setting my own. Um, my own deadline and, and things like that, so it's, it's going to be fun. I'm not going to have the others to sort of, um, you know, sometimes we can bog each other down, you know. If, if things aren't finished, you go, oh my God. But this time, it's just going to be me, so I'm going to be able to actually, for the first time, um, set my own uh, uh, principles, do my own deadline, and, and work with that. Maybe it's harder than I think. <laughs> <laughs> time will tell. Yeah. Do you have a title yet? No, I think the uh, the way I mean, because I've had these rough cassettes, and I don't know, the engineer seemed to write, you know, Freddie Mercury solo, and over the days I've been looking at them and I thought oh, that might be okay, just solo at the moment. So Freddie Mercury goes solo. Well, it's it's, it's to the point, and, and I mean, it's um, it's saying what it, what I'm doing. So at the moment I could call it solo. And otherwise, I think of something a bit more wonderful. <laughs> Would you have any aspirations at all of making a tour without Queen? What would I do? I can't come. I'd have to have a backing band. <laughs> You'd have to have somebody that. behind a curtain. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. I, I think at the moment all I'm thinking about is just coming up with with, with a solo album. And uh, as far as um, <clears throat> touring, oh no way, no. I, I, I love touring with Queen because I mean that's I have so much fun. It's, it's like we all have a individual solo projects all working anyway when we when we tour. So I mean it's it's. I think, and the, the way I think, I mean, if it ever happens, is if I do my solo album and then we go on to, I mean, I think Queen would do some of my solo songs anyway. Mm. So, I mean, they would just be recreating what I did in the studio anyway, in their way. And so that would be quite good. They would sort of take it a stage further. They would be doing my songs. I mean, in, in a way, that that's what happens now anyway. We all have little solo, solo projects within the band anyway, as you know, and we all just um, play on them. So as, as far as that's concerned, no, I, I don't, I don't um, have any aspirations of going on, on, on stage without them. Is Fred Mandel becoming pretty much of a yes, fifth yeah. member? No, I wouldn't say he's a fifth. At the moment, he's, 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 he's working with Elton John all the time. You know, oh. He's got like a year's contract. He's a very good musician, and um, mm -hmm. as far as stage work is concerned, he's, 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 he is an integral part, and uh, we'd hate to lose him. But if, if he's not there, we'll have somebody else do the, this. He just does all the synthesized parts and the odd piano things, but he's very, very good. But also that gives you, that frees you, those, those piano that. parts. I oh, mean, I love that. Yes, how I love how that. could a person keep do what you do without stopping? No, but I mean, I, he doesn't only just uh, he doesn't just take over my piano part. I mean, he actually adds to the songs. I mean, because uh, we were losing out. I mean, especially now that we're doing a lot of synthesized work on albums, there was no one else to do it because I mean, I can't do all that and play the piano and sing and run around and. It just it was a bit too much. I mean, you know, somewhere along the line, uh, you know, something was going to, you know, there was uh, this uh, limiting thing, and we needed we needed another musician to actually do those parts because every, everybody else is just doing so many things all at the same time. And I did need, I wanted a bit of freedom to actually be on front of the stage because I felt a lot of the times I was just sitting in, uh, at the piano stool, and uh, I don't mind doing that for the odd song, but I, I just don't like being restricted so much and. Uh, I wanted to actually sort of sing the song and, and, and deliver the song while actually being on, on front stage. And um, Fred Mandel helps a lot that way. He takes over a lot, 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 lot of the um, synthesized parts. And uh, if it's not Fred Mandel, it'll be somebody else. 
How long has it been since your last tour? Phoebe and I were just talking about how it's hard My to keep God. track of one year to the next. You know, was it? it it's been. I like, think it's been something like yeah, two over two years. That's two what I was years. thinking. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. I was talking to Bryn last night, and she said, "Well, I've been gone for a year, and it was, and she's lived in mm. New York for a year, mm. and it was mm. well before that." You um, remain in amazing shape. You, you know, I've always been an admirer of your body. <laughs> well, it's sort of, um, it's still there. It's still there. I say I'm, I'm working out and doing things like that. You know, it's just. A, I happen to be honest. I haven't worked out for about a, a month or so. It's so hard for somebody like me to to have a routine for that kind of thing. I wish, I wish, I wish my 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 work, my career, only took place in say one one area uh, that way. Then I could really get into a routine. All these people with wonderful bodies, they have they get into a routine. They stay in one place. They have a, a job that goes from nine to five or whatever, and then they can go and, and, and into the gym and work out for two hours, and then and then, then there's a cycle. So I mean, you can and that's what. To keep a, but for me, I, I'm suddenly in Germany one one week, then I'm in London or whatever, and I just it, it's, you know, I'm flying. I mean, I wish I had a set of weights in a plane, to be honest. So I mean, I have to sort of take that into consideration, and uh, I, I take it from there. But uh, otherwise, I'm, you know, I like to keep fit. Sorry time, about that. Time well, have to a flip. breather. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Well, just to set the scene here, we've now been to a, a wedding. Yeah. <laughs> Now we're really? in an apartment upstairs from the wedding. That's <laughs> great. That's Munich. Actually, I mean, I don't know anyone. No. I would never get to do things like that over, over here. They seem to um, look after me quite well. I wanted to ask you about uh, that because I know many cities in the States, you, you're a very recognizable figure and it's kind of hard for you to walk down well, the street. Well, I mean, yes, over here, I think they're very, they're very cool over here, believe it or not. I mean, they, they, they're very, And it, it's like, Munich is like a village. After a while, I've been here for so long. And after a while, they just sort of you know, take it into consideration that I'm around, and uh, they don't really pester me at all. They don't. Does is that ever a problem in your life, big cities, or do you kind not of anymore. dig it? I dig it. Yeah. Not anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> it's just uh, those days of women throwing themselves in, in front of me and tearing my hair out and all that is is, is over now. Culture club are, uh, are getting that now, so it's just it comes and goes. I mean, you know, I'd, wouldn't it be awful if people are still sort of say doing that? You have to grow up. I, th I think. Uh, you know, public. I mean, I'm not saying that we don't have a young generation of people that buy our records. It's just that they just accept us as being, you know, established, and and it's a different kind of thing. To be honest, I'd hate it anyway if, if uh, people still uh, still started doing that. It's, it's wonderful to actually have to go through all that. It's, I mean, everybody needs that. And we had all our, <clears throat> you know, we had those crazy scenes in Japan the first time we went there, and <clears throat> all these screaming girls at airports trying to sort of run you down and things. All that's yeah, and, and the late, the, the the last time it happened was in in uh, South um, South America, and where we had to go in armored cars and things like that. It's it's all that was like Beatlemania. That was crazy. yeah. It was just um, you know. But I, I I I like to think I can walk around anywhere without people. If they recognize me, they, they basically just come up and uh, and say hello and ask me sort of intelligent questions these days. Whereas before it was, you know, why do you still wear black nail varnish and why only on the left hand and things? Well, it's just. You have to grow grow up. It's interesting that you mention Culture Club because um, I am struck when looking at them, not that you ever wore a dress or mm. anything mm. that I know of. Um, you you guys were that flamboyant well, when you started. With the well, Zon think, you had Zandra Rhodes yeah. clothes and well, then I think, I think that happened. Well, I think that happens. It's, it's like a cycle. Somebody else has to take over. I remember saying that to, to somebody. It's exactly the same. It's just that it's a different time and uh, people are saying, oh, isn't he so outrageous? I mean, we were outrageous... At that time, I mean, look at David Bowie when he started up, and Roxy Music. I mean, we all have. You know, there's always you have to start. I mean, the Beatles in their day were totally outrageous. I mean, with that long hair in the in those days, people weren't, um, you know, they weren't uh, used to that. And uh, now you're getting this sort of very androgynous. I mean, I mean, even I was androgynous when I started off. I mean, this is really into the sort of transvestite factor or whatever. But I mean, I think Boy George is a very I think he's 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 very very good. He, he really is, good. is. Yeah, I think he's talented and he knows what he's doing. And it's just that he's aware. When people start off these days, I mean, they have um, they have all in their belt. They have they, they've sort of um, they've grown up with all their breeding is all the stuff that we've done before, you know. And uh, so they have all that under their belt. And so it's to me, I think it's quite outrageous what he's doing. But I mean, I, I can see that that's the way he's he's starting off at this point, and he's just taking all that. He's just done his homework and he thinks that's the norm as far as he's concerned. 
It's sort of second generation, isn't it? I mean, it really is, yeah. It's sort of... Uh, it was just... Um, yes, it's just... It is second generation. It's just that uh, he's a, they're a new band and there's another generation of people taking on to them being new. You were probably his influence. Well, he, we, we are friends. We are friends. And he used to sort of say that he used to come uh, to some of our shows. And, and there was one party. We had a, a hat party at, at, at Legends about four years ago. And he said he gatecrashed it with Marilyn. I mean, you heard about Marilyn. Mm -hmm. And he said, of course, you didn't know me then, but, I mean, we just wore, wore hats and gatecrashed it. And uh, that's what he was saying. And I, I said, oh, my God, how things have changed. You know, and a couple of years after that, he just become a phenomenal star. There you go. Good luck. You're a flamboyant person anyway, but is the Freddie Mercury that we see on stage pretty much the, the real Freddie Mercury? Well, it's... Well, it is me. I mean, it is me <laughs> doing it, but it's just that I'm, I don't like to sort of... The theatrics I get... Basically, that's what you're talking about. The theatrics mm -hmm. I get up to on stage are, are me doing my job, you know. I mean, I hate being still, and this is the way I uh, let myself I get into it. That doesn't mean that I, every day... <laughs> when I go about in the streets or whatever that I'm I'm like that. No, I'm just sort of I'm basically quite a shy person really when I when I get down to it. But I'm mean, I can uh, I can be a real bitch as well. I just I just let my characters loose at the right time, you know. It's just uh, I don't have to sort of play the key role all the time. That's just you know, it's just the way I am. I just and I don't worry about the fact that if I'm suddenly um in in someone's um front room or something, I don't have to sort of suddenly play the key role. I mean I'm just I, I just take it as it comes. You just showed me the the new video. Yeah. Um, you're definitely an actor. That's the first. That. Well, I think we were all acting there. I mean, it was just the first time we were put in uh, in these roles. And uh, see, a lot of the times people make videos and 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 expect musicians or whatever to sort of play a certain role and do acting. I mean, that's where it, it, it falls down. I mean, a lot of times where we've we've shied away from that cause, so that we don't look... Sometimes, I mean, if, if you go into a little acting thing, I mean, you've just got to do it really well. And if you don't do it well, then it just comes across as really crass. I mean, it's like musicians trying to act and uh, because they want to do a video, you know. You've just got to be very careful. And this time, because of the fun element and the, the comedy element, I mean, I, I think it works because we just put ourselves... It's so farcical. And it's the first time that a whole... Well, I know the Stones did it a long time ago, Dressed Up and Drag, but I don't think they did a video. But I, don't, I can't think of any other video where the four, um, you know, the four principals, as it were, are actually doing real comedy drag. And, and, and also from the, from the standpoint that um, a lot of times uh, Queen come across as very serious. I mean, the music ability is always there, but I mean, we've always been humorous underneath. But maybe it doesn't come across through songs or, or whatever, and on stage we're very, very aggressive or whatever and the and, and the, the, the humor element is always lost and this time it was it was a, a good way of, of showcasing uh, that bit and I think we we're all very we suddenly found that we could actually do it quite well it was just that we were sort of maybe restricting ourselves thinking that we couldn't do it this time we said oh fuck it we we're just gonna do it and uh, go crazy and we all sort of built our own characters around each sort of you know drag individual <laughs> I seem to cope quite well. <laughs> <laughs> Did a pain I've, never worn, I've never worn high heels before. I've never done a... Well, I love your garters. A, all that, yes. <laughs> but even though, I mean, a lot of people doing... Um, what's it like? Even say in, uh, uh, New Orleans Mardi Gras or whatever, or even just a, 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 a Halloween party or something. Never dressed up in drag. I don't know why. And I kept the moustache on, so... Um, I don't know, I just had more fun uh, doing that. I think we all had more fun doing that because it was just, we're letting ourselves sort of, we're letting ourselves go a bit and we're not so worried, so worried about the, uh, how we're going to depict the musical element because we're always worried about that in videos and this time we just said, we'll just do it and I think it came across very well. I hope people like it. It's wonderful. Did it pain you to, uh, you kept your moustache on for the for the drag parts but you took but it took off? But took it off, the... yeah. Because we suddenly went into a, we did a, I wanted, I've always wanted to do this Nijinsky uh, role as a well, but I just wanted to wear the costume because I, mean, I didn't want to dance like him. Like, I couldn't ever. It's just that uh, I always wanted to wear this, this La Primini de Fond costume, which is a, and uh, working with the Royal Ballet, I thought I, I must do it properly. Anyway, you know, I mean, I, I, I could have kept my moustache on, but it, that would have then taken another comedy element as well. I just wanted it sort of a bit more serious at that level, especially if you're dancing with, um, you know, real professionals and uh, I think that was another thing I've always wanted to do so there you are two in one one video 
But you really pull it off. I mean, you really do look like a real Well, I dancer. do my best. I do my best, yeah. I'm just, uh, they teach you a lot, you know. I mean, they sort of... One of the principal um, ballet dancers from the Royal Ballet is Wayne Eagling. I mean, he's been a friend of mine from a long time. He sort of taught me how to do things. And if I couldn't do them, I mean, he just sort of... He taught me how to cheat as well in certain things. And uh, a lot of things were very difficult, but we, I just tried them all. I'm willing to try everything. So the Royal Ballet, I suppose, they, they don't just uh, appear in any old buddy's video. They're, oh, no, they have to sort of... They're friends of yours, eh? Yeah, so, I mean... Because a long time ago, about uh, four years ago, they asked me to do a, a charity um, gala, which they had. So it was all, all the, the donations went to charity. And uh, they just wanted me to... Um, they actually, what, uh, this is when I actually did it at uh, Covent Garden. And they wanted me to... Um, uh, sing Bohemian Rhapsody but dance at the same time which has never been done so I mean but then they choreographed a routine for me and I'm the thing is they did they, they had me upside down right at the end that I was in the shape of a cross and it sort of levered me down and I was still singing uh, the, the, the finishing passages of Bohemian Rhapsody God it was um, that was very nerve wracking but since then I became friends and so I thought maybe we could use them in a little passage for this video doesn't looking at this and seeing how, seeing that you can do it, that it looks fine, make you want to maybe think about movies or something like that, acting anyway? I mean, it's, it's you know, a lot of people have asked me that. I mean, it's 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 just just the way it is. I mean, if if I want to do it, I'm going to do it properly. And at the moment, I just uh, I'm a little scared of it. I mean, I just uh, I feel that uh, <clears throat> number one, the solo album is coming out, and well, I'm going to do the solo album, and uh, I'm going to put all my energies to that at the moment. And then when it, when the time is right, maybe I'll, I'll do it. Maybe I'll do it, yeah. I haven't, uh, I certainly haven't discarded the idea altogether. It's just uh, something that have, if it comes at the right time, then uh, yes. A lot of things I'm doing at the moment is also trying to work with other people. And uh, after having worked with David Bowie and things, I mean, the Michael Jackson project, which might have a, it might never come to fruition, but I mean, it's, we've sort of started on it. But then uh, also, I, mean, I quite like writing for, like, say, um, different films and things. I mean, a lot of people have uh, actually approached me to write uh, for film. I mean, at the moment, there's one idea that's just, I don't know whether it'll ever come up, is, is, is they've asked me to write the the title track and another song for the, the, the new Conan movie, which has which got Arnold Schwarzenegger and, and, and Grace Jones. Well, I love Grace mm. Jones. And they said that I could either write a song for her and uh, I'd love to do that. So, I mean, that's whether that comes off. Those kind of things. So this, it's just like sidestepping a little. It's just doing things outside the Queen idiom, which is good. I like doing that now. I yeah. want to do that, otherwise I mean, I'd just be, you know, uh, you know, I just don't want people to remember me as being just part of Queen. I want them to remember me as doing other things as well. Do you think there's ever a time when people become, you know, uh, too old to rock and roll? I think that's true, yes. I mean, it's... But it's I mean, I don't think I've quite reached it. I mean, the moment... I don't think it's... it's, it's I don't think it's the fact of being too old to rock and roll, I think you can jig and dance about it as, as long as you want. It's, it's when you, I just feel it's, if, if you find there comes a time where your records aren't selling as much, and then I'd hate to do a downward tread, if you know what I mean, mm -hmm. and suddenly still keep going as Queen, doing, say, the lesser venues. I mean, now that I've tasted the top whack, I mean, I would hate to suddenly think that, okay, we can't fill, say, certain auditoriums. I'd just leave them and do something else. Still maintaining the Queen thing, rather than keep going back and say, Okay, you played, um, <clears throat> we played, say, Madison Square Gardens, um, uh, say, four times in a row, every time we do it. If suddenly we go back and we realize that we can only, say, do one show, I don't think I'd like to do that. I'd like to do something totally different. I'd, I'd rather go as Queen and do a very small club or something, so it's, it's different. I'd, uh, going and doing Madison Square Garden once, because you can't sell it out more than three times, would be a downward, downward step. I don't want to do that. Let's I don't see. want to do that. Yeah, yeah. Get, get out on Yeah, but top. basically, in the, end, in the end, we're here to sell records, so it doesn't, to be honest, I don't care where I play. In the end, it's the records, and if the records... Okay, if one album didn't sell as much as the, the last, that doesn't matter, but if there was a sort of... If you just felt inside you that, you know, the records weren't selling, you have to just do it in a different way. Nobody is a better critic than oneself. Well, you, you're dead right, you're dead right. But sometimes you have to sort of be very honest with yourself and sometimes a lot of people want to keep going at it and uh, I know as far as I'm concerned my own personal character is that I just couldn't do I mean I, I want the best and if, if I've reached a certain goal and I certainly can't maintain that I'll just get out of it and do something else rather than keep you know it's, it's just 
I, I don't want to end up like Gloria Swanson, you know, sort of, sort of just, uh, you just have to move. Just I was, I was trying to think different. of a rock and roll example, and Jerry Lee Lewis came to mind, but shit, he plays great. Yeah, <laughs> Still. Sure, sure, sure. And then I recalled yeah. that I had just gotten an 8x10 glossy of Gary Glitter last week, and you would die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Big old fat blimp. Yeah. Oh well. well. Oh. <laughs> and and still trying. Yeah. Give me a break. Well, uh, well, that's the way it is. I was just. Uh, I mean, you know, rock and rollers can keep rocking. It just doesn't mean. It, it, I mean, they have to keep doing in the same idiom. You can start doing. I, mean, I, I feel we have, Queen have enough, intelligence and um, creativity to do, very different things. And that's why, moving on to say say a musical thing. I mean, I, I'd love to write a musical one day, you know. But, I mean, that time can come when, when my legs give up and I can't do my stage work, I can do it then. It's that kind of thing I'm thinking. I just don't want to... I don't don't want to sort of end up doing, you know, thinking, uh, hoping that people, uh, you know, uh, remember me as just being um, uh, somebody who wrote songs and, and carried on uh, and did shows. I, I, I think... But to force yourself to do things is, is different. It's just... When the time comes and when it's right, then that's the best time to do it. You wouldn't be happy just doing nothing, would you? Because obviously you have enough money and financial resources. Oh, exactly. To do that. No, I don't. And no way could I stay at home and sort of keep um, wiping my gold discs and platinum discs and saying, "Oh, what a wonderful person I was at the time." You know, no. Oh no. Even when I get to forty and forty-five or whatever, I'll be doing different things that keep me. Because you've got to keep yourself stimulated. You've just got to keep yourself. And. Um, there are so many different things that keep me stimulated. So I mean, it doesn't it doesn't have to just be Queen all the time. At the moment, I mean, the last ten years or whatever, there's so much within Queen that wanted me, that kept my uh, adrenaline going, that I wanted to do it. And now that's why it's taking me. People from the very onset have been saying, "Oh, when when is your solo album going to come out?" A lot of people sort of burn themselves out too quickly and go, "Right." I mean, I just didn't feel I wanted a solo project at the time. Now the time has come. Well, after ten years, after thirteen years. It's come, and I, I really do want to do a solo project. I really feel that I want to do something on my own, but that doesn't mean I discard Queen altogether. It's still there. It's just I'm I'm sidestepping a little and 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 doing that, and through that might come all kinds of other things, you know. And like you say about acting, you never know. Then I suddenly I might suddenly see this role that's offered to me or whatever, and I'm just saying, okay, well I can take. It. But if I do do that, then I'll, I'll make sure I make a good job at it. Or I'll do my best at any rate. I'm not going to do it half measures. How'd you get to be so creative? Were you were you a creative little kid? I don't know. It's just um, a lot of people are creative in their own way. It doesn't have, it don't have to be just in the music or whatever. They're, right, but they're creative and all that. I just, many uh, people just have, n- never I just, have the opportunity to bring it to fruition. No, like but that, that 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 is part of talent as well. You see, I mean, you just you can't. This I've always maintained that you can't just uh, sit at home and say, "Look, I'm so wonderful. I'm so creative. I'll just wait." No, you've got to go out. You've got to go out there and actually grab it. And utilize it and, and make make it work. That is part of talent. Talent, having talent is one thing, but to actually use it and feed it to the masses is another part of talent. That's that's that. Yeah, it's in, it goes hand in hand. I know there are a lot of lot of people I know who are, who are very talented in, in in the way that I feel, but they just haven't made it because I mean they haven't got that extra. <coughs> That extra thing that that's needed to actually sort of um, it's it's called hard sell I think you know you just could really got to sell your you just got to sell your ass there was you just got to go there and 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 ram it down their throats and say here I am this is I am creative I'm wonderful and here eat it you know? <laughs> so you have you have to do that yeah. even though success came very early in life to you. It, it almost seems like you never considered failure. I mean, you're, you're so confident. Well, you mustn't. You mustn't. You consider failure and you, you fail. It's just... Uh, you know, I just... Um, I think my whole lifestyle is like that. It's just... It's not just to do with my career. It's to do with everything. It's even if painting or if I take on a... If I buy a house or whatever. It's just, it's just got to move. I mean, if, 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 if the house crumbles, I just build it again. That, that's, my, that's the way I think. I mean, I, didn't, I don't go around... Saying, oh, God, I've lost it all, that's it, that's the end. No, I just, I have this natural inbuilt um, drive that that I think will always be there. Thank God I've got that, you know, it's just, and, and failure doesn't elude me. It doesn't, it doesn't, uh, elude is not the right word. F- failure doesn't, uh, I don't get disappointed. I mean, it, I mean, people always, I mean, you learn by your mistakes and all that. I mean, it's experience. If something goes wrong, fine, you learn by your mistakes and I just go, 
And sometimes I value that, you know. I don't mean total failure, but sometimes I value that. I think, okay, I, I, I know I shouldn't have done that. But it's the only way you can learn. I can remember uh, you telling me a couple of years ago that, that your mom and dad, when you first started out, were not too happy about your that, choice, that, choice that of in career. Itself, that in itself instilled me in, into, into thinking that it, it should be right. I mean, I, most, most of, most of the, uh, you know, the, the best, the key figures or whatever, always had a rebellious upbringing or whatever. You know, you've got to rebel somewhere. I mean, I'm just, I just rebel all the time. I mean, look at all the ones, I mean, like, say, the Sex Pistols or them, that was there. I mean, look at what Boy George is going through right now. I mean, I mean, he's just, um, especially in, 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 in middle America, I should think, it's just, uh, you know, they're burning his records and things. Wonderful, absolutely wonderful. And uh, he, he knows how to, um, how to actually um, use that and enhance himself. Oh, yeah, Notori notoriety is always a, a good factor. Are you on close terms with your parents now, though? That's about the same. That's about the same. They I mean, must I be proud of you, though. Oh, they're proud of me. Of course they're proud of me, especially now. Of course they are. Yeah. It's just something that... I think parents are always like that. They always just want their, their son or daughter to do, do well in what they... You know what they choose. I mean, sometimes, of course, in in, in the early part of us, parents always have a, a preconceived idea of what their their you know their, their sons and daughters should do. But afterwards, I mean, you grow up and you t take over. And uh, I, th I think I think a, a, a good parent should just basically sort of see what you know uh, the son or daughter wants to do and and just sort of help him that way. That's the way I see it. That's what a modern modern parent should be. But I mean, as far as I'm concerned, I mean, I'm just, uh, I'm quite a loner as well. I mean, I just, I, I don't like getting help from other people too much. I mean, I just, uh, I do research, but I don't like anybody sort of handing it out to me on a silver plate. I like to do it all myself. You do feel a great obligation to your fans, don't you? Oh, yes, I do. But I, I, I my greatest obligation is to myself. To be Absolutely. honest, it is. It should be. And it, I have to do it that way because if I do that, if I put me first, then then I know how to deal with myself and come across better to to, to the people who buy my records. And uh, so there you go. I mean, it's just uh, it's a matter of policy, and policies change, and it's a, it's a phase you're going through or whatever. All I want to do, I, I just don't want to do the same thing over and over again. Almost all the artists who have played Sun City, which you mentioned, including Frank Sinatra, mm. have mm. Re received enormous mm. slaggings from the press about playing in a racist country. Do, do politics enter into your thinking? Politics have, have, yeah, but I mean, they enter into my thinking, but I mean, I discard it because, I mean, it's just we're musicians. I mean, when we went to South, South America, we got, you know, branded for... You know, playing. I mean, we we went uh, for playing to Argentina, and we had a war with Argentina uh, about three weeks later. And the funny thing about us after that, um, under pressure, which uh, which happened to be out at the time, was like it happened to be number one in England. And, uh, and the funny thing is that the, the stations in Argentina were playing it as well for, for the forces. It was it was actually in the, the BBC News. It was it was quite outrageous. It just goes to show that we actually didn't. I don't like to be political. Music is is very free. I mean, it's just it depends on who you are. I mean, John Lennon can do that. I don't write political songs. I mean, well, Queen don't. Queen write escapist songs. They're for people who can go in there, escape, and then come out. I, we don't have political, hidden political message messages in in, so, in our songs. It's just not the way we are. We just like to play, and we're an international group. We like to play to every audience anywhere for music. And if politics enter that, then that, that's tough shit. It just have to be. We 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 don't go to uh, different territories in a political way. We're not. Uh, we're just an, uh, an English rock and roll band that play music for everybody. Just a bunch of guys. <laughs> but we are. We are. That's that's the way. I, I know. Um, we might take our music seriously in terms of, in terms of musical content, and things, but not in terms of trying to preach. You know, we don't want to preach through our songs. Yeah. Songs, I told you that before, they're just, um, they're to listen to, make people happy. It's like, I mean, I'd hate, I'd hate to go, um, to listen to any band who's trying to preach me and tell me, uh, or, or, or tell me about, people are aware of all, all, all of the, the ups and downs in the world today, and, and I don't want people singing about them, to be honest. I mean, I don't want them singing about wars and, and the sadness or whatever. Okay, I write the odd sad song or whatever, but that's, 
that's neither here nor there. Basically, my songs are, are all like fantasy or, or, or fun or dance or a certain thing that I've, I've created, but it's got nothing to do with, with the world that is at the, at the moment. You know, it's just... Uh, it's not political. Stickles said I should ask you about Korea. When uh, Did something funny happen to Roger and John in Korea? Actually, to be honest, I don't know. I don't on, know. on this What's last that? little promo tour? Did he say that? No, no, he no, just no, said no. I should ask. You know, oh, he was God, yucking yeah. it up. Oh, there you are. Oh, well, there you are. I don't know. Any, I'm the last to hear. <laughs> See, I haven't even. I have. Um, I haven't seen them when they come. They've only just come back, and mm. I've left. I left town, so I really don't know how that went. To be honest, I didn't even know Roger was in town until I found out that he was back in uh, England. Mm. I haven't heard anything about it. I haven't heard anything about it. I know they've been to Japan, Australia, and I. I, I know that Roger was supposed to go to Los Angeles. I don't even know if he went there. Mm. You, you can tell me that, to be honest. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Haven't been there in a while myself. No, I don't know if... Yeah, I don't know if Roger... I don't know what Jerry said to you, but... No, I don't know, I don't, I don't know um, how that went. Basically, what happened was... Uh, they, they, they'd undertaken this uh, promotional tour earlier on, and we were in the middle of doing the this new promo, and uh, their bits were done. And then I... Uh, I had, I had to sort of hang out and work with the Royal Ballet and all that. So I was spending most, uh, most of my time routining with them and working out, you know, the, the dance sequences and, and, and things and uh, while Roger and John were doing uh, Japan, Korea and Australia, I guess. What are your feelings about uh, so many bands seem to be undertaking uh, tours with big sponsors, be it a beer company or a perfume I think, company? Yes, I think that's... that's uh, I think it's a, it's, it's a good step. I think that's another. It's a new form of um, making money. You know, merchandising seems to make more money than than normal tours. To be honest, I mean, meaning when you do a tour, you can get you can make more money out of merchandising than just ticket sales. And uh, of course, the moment people, it's it's all it's it's a new thing. It is a, like video is a very new thing. Outcomes uh, different ways of, uh, and it'll always happen. Yeah, I think sponsorship is a good thing. So you it, it gives you money, of course. <laughs> I love your honesty. <laughs> Listen, I'm here to, you know, I'm not... I, I think uh, I think any band will do that, and I think we're into sponsorship as well, but I mean, at the moment, we just said, we're talking with a, a very big firm, but I, mean, I won't mention. And depending on what happens, I think it'll go very well. Yes, I know, yeah. Pepsi Cola with Michael Jackson and things like that. Yes, I think it's... Uh, it is. It, it, it's something that I think a lot of bands are going to do. So the next step for you personally, then, is obviously the solo project. Yeah, but I'm going to. I think a lot of things are going to evolve from that. You see, it's, at the moment, it's it's a it's an embryo, to be honest. It's it's a very, and I don't want to sort of start getting all all the aspects of it all sort of creeping. I, I just want to, I, I want to be in in a way kind of left alone and and make sure it's, it's okay, and then start putting my feelers out. And out of it could come all kinds of things. Like I mean, I could. I'm hoping that maybe one of the songs could be a part of a feature film that could be one tangent, maybe work with a couple of other different artists so that that, that can be a collaboration in terms, um, make videos of my own. I mean, I, I, I'm dying to do a video that, that I feel that I, I just can do all by myself. So there's so many different areas that I can actually pinpoint from my solo project, and I think that's going to take up most of my time in, in the near future, and uh, that's enough for me, you know. <laughs> Is there not a Queen tour in the near future also? Well, you see, the Queen... Yes, but I mean, the Queen... Near future, OK, the Queen, the queen tour... The Sun City thing might happen, say, July. Or after, and then after that, that's what I was trying to tell you. It's not going to be, like, major, major tours. We're just trying to think in terms of just doing ex exclusive concerts in, in, in major territories at the moment. The way they're going to be... Uh, they're going to come across, I don't know, because we have to still work on that. Mm -hmm. If you go to Africa, I'm coming. <laughs> that sounds pretty you neat have, to me. Have, oh, you must yeah. come. You oh, must it come. sounds wonderful. You must come. I think it's... Uh, they've always wanted us to go there, and uh, they, they, they say we're going to just pack Sun City out. They've been waiting for us for for a while, and I just think uh, now's the right time. I'm not afraid of playing in ter any territories. They've got to be good. I mean, you know, I, I, I'm certainly not going to go to Nicar Nicaragua or something like that. I'm not stupid, but I mean... If the need is there, and if we haven't played there, I'd like to go there. I think most of the band want to do that too. I think we're also thinking of doing something in in the sort of 
in the eastern, really eastern territories like Bangkok and Hong Kong, which we haven't done, mm. and Singapore and places Pretend like that. Pretend Bangkok, I think. Yeah, yeah, a uh, few people, police have done things like oh, that, really? but, yeah, and uh, why not, you know? Yeah, indeed. Okay, my final question is, your birthplace is Zanzibar? Yes, that's right. What were your parents doing there? <laughs> they were freaking out. <laughs> <laughs> Well, they were working for the for the government at the time. My father was working for the government, and uh, Zanzibar was a, was a was part of the Commonwealth at the time, and uh, so he was he was a civil servant, and he, he worked over there. And uh, there you are. I never I, I was at a very early age. I was I, I, when I was about seven. I was put in boarding school in India. So I mean, I went from Zanzibar to India for for a while, and then came back to England. Mm. And uh, a very upheaval of an upbringing. Sounds <laughs> which, like it. Which seems to have worked, I guess. I guess I, so. In a way, it sort of made... I was, like, put in an environment where I had to sort of fend for myself at a very early age, which I think was a, a good... Um, <clears throat> a good... Uh, what would you call it? A good... Um, I, I, got, I got a very uh, a good grasp of how, how to be responsible at a very early age, and I think that's... That's why it's made me into such a fiend. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're a good fiend. Well, it? <laughs> Thank you very want... much. Okay. Is there anything I haven't asked you that you want to tell me about? I can't think of anything. I've forgotten all the things I've said. <laughs> Thanks, Freddie.